what is your favorite thing about your mom? I love the way she sings and loves Jesus. Um, her pumpkin muffins. Oh, no, 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 no. You do not love those pumpkin muffins. <laughs> What is your favorite thing about your mom? I love her. Happy Mother's Day! We, we love, love you, Mom! Good morning and happy Mother's Day, Genoa Church family. Thank you so much for spending your Sunday with us. If you're joining us in person for the first time, please grab a connection card out of the seat in front of you. And after you fill it out, drop it in one of the orange buckets in the back. If you're joining us online, head over to our website. We would love to connect with you. Whether you're joining us in person or online, we are thrilled that you are here. And now, let's get ready to worship together. Amen. Well, good morning, Genoa. How are you? It is good to see you. Let's stand together. I want to wish all of you beautiful mothers a happy Mother's Day. I want to say a special happy Mother's Day to my mom back in North Carolina, who just turned 81 years old two weeks ago. So, God, we thank you for moms. God, we thank you for your presence. I was lost in shame, could not get past my blame till he called my name. I'm so glad he changed me. Darkness held me down, but Jesus pulled me out. I'm no longer bound. I'm so glad he changed me. See, I now a new creation.
God, once again, we come before you and we thank you. Thank you for the blood of your son, Jesus. God, we thank you for the gift of Calvary. We thank you for your blood. We thank you for your life. And God, we give this service to you. Ask Holy Spirit that you would have your way in service this morning. Sing this with me. The blood of Jesus speaks for me. Be still, my soul, redeeming love. Out of the dust of Calvary is rising to the throne above. There is no vengeance in his pride. While it is finished, fills the sky. Forgiveness is the speaks for me. My heart can barely take it in. He pardons all my guilty stains. Surrender all my shame to Him. He breaks the curse of every chain. My sin is great. The boundless grace His heart reveals A mercy deeper than the sea The blood of Jesus speaks for me When my accuser makes the claim that I should die for my offense. I point him to that rugged frame where I found life at Christ's expense. See from his hands, his feet, his side, the fountain flowing deep and wide. Oh, he did shout the to me, the blood of Jesus speaks for me. Oh, worthy is the Lamb, Lamb for sinners slain. Jesus, Lord of all, glory to His name. Heaven crying out, let the earth proclaim power in the blood. Glory to His name, worthy is the Lamb, Lamb for sinners slain, Jesus Lord of all, glory to His name, heaven crying out, let the earth proclaim, power in the blood, glory to His name, Jesus.
I speak the name of Jesus over you. In your hurting, in your sorrow, I will ask my God to move. I speak the name because it's all that I can do. In desperation, I'll seek heaven and pray this for you. I pray for your healing. The circumstances will change. I pray that the fear Jesus' name, I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We speak Jesus. I speak the name of all authority. Declaring blessing, every promise he is faithful to keep. I speak the name no grave could ever hold. He is greater, he is stronger, he's a God impossible. I pray for your healing, the circumstances will change. I pray that the fear inside. So today in this precious day, Lord, where we celebrate the awe and wonder of moms, God, and what you've created them for and to do, God, we pray for healing for all the unspoken that goes along with that, God. God, we stand here and we pray blessings upon our children and our children's children. God, we pray blessings on the woman who stands here today, Lord, with no children. God, we pray that you comfort them. God, those of us that stand here and lift up our children and say, Lord, we don't know what to do today. Lord, you fill us with the confidence of your spirit and say, lead them in my direction and I'll take it from there. God, we pray today that revival comes as the word is spoken. Lord, we know that you have a mighty plan in store for us today. And so we lift up our hands ready to receive God so that we can pour out to a community and a nation, God, that is hungry for you. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. 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 Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us. It is good to see you. Before you're seated, if you will, turn to your neighbor and say hello. We love you guys. Hi, neighbors. Hi, Diane. Hi, everyone. Good to see you guys. Well,
Well, good morning, Genoa. Thank you guys so very much for being here. This is a special day. I don't know what it is about Mother's Day and Father's Day, but Mother's Day, we always have about the second highest attendance of the year. You can't get in a restaurant. Chocolates and flowers are sold out. Even if you go to Myers Gas Station, you just can't find them anywhere. And compare that to Father's Day is the second lowest attendance of the year. And I haven't worn a necktie in 20 years. If they give me another one today, I'm going to use it. (laughs) But uh, moms, we are so honored and delighted to have you here today. And I just wonder if all of our moms would be willing to stand up so we can give you the proper ado this morning. Would you do that, moms? We love you and thank you so very, very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. God bless you, God bless you. And it's the old joke, but true, if it weren't for you, none of us would be here, right? You can get that very well. I'd like you to watch the screen just for a moment. There is a very, very precious little girl by the name of uh, uh, McKenna. And McKenna uh, has been part of our church since she was born. Uh, She is on her way to Children's Hospital this morning at 6 o'clock this morning or so. We got a telephone call that the heart she's been waiting for becomes available this morning. <clears throat> McKenna has had three brain surgeries already. She's had a lung operation. She's been through so much with her heart that is barely able to function. And uh, her mom, Annie, loves Jesus Christ with all of her. Here's how committed this mom is. She, after uh, McKenna was born, went on to complete her RN degree so she could be the registered nurse taking care of her own little girl as she grows up. I think that's a pretty incredible mom that would do that. So if you would, let's lift that family up in prayer. Would you just point your hands up towards that picture on the screen? Dear Heavenly Father, guys, let me have that back up. Lord, we... we uh, Bring little McKenna to you and Annie to you, Lord, this morning. Be with the doctors, the surgeons, Lord. Father, she has such an innocent heart and a precious heart. But now would you give her a new physical heart that she can continue growing in wisdom and stature and love for you. In Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. And then, guys, you all are doing so splendidly well. What I would like to do right now is have Pastor Scott come. You, you're, on, you're on this end. All right. I've got Zach and Taylor Baker. Taylor seemed like she was a a youth group about five years ago, but she's grown and has a family. I thought it was dedicated arrow. Arrow. And now Juniper. Now Juniper. Juniper, those eyes, you'll get anything you want in life, trust me. (laughs) Trust me, trust me. Guys, congratulations this morning. We have the Brown family with Elaney and Bob, and they're dedicating Ellie and Clint. Elaney and Bob, thank you so much. Where do you live, guys? Centerburg. In Centerburg. Thank you so very much for being here, and what a precious family God's given you. We got Donna and Keith Elliott, and hey, they are Donna dedicating Keith. little Bryce today. Keith, where do you all live? Uh, in Galena. In Galena. Bryce, you could preach in that outfit, buddy. <laughs> You've got it going on. My soul, why don't you dress like that? I got those shoes. So look at great. the shoes. Okay. We got Aaron and Jim Paul Lecky, and they're de- de- uh, dedicating Myla today. Hi, Myla. Jim, where do you guys live? In Galena. In Galena. Thanks so much for being here this morning. This is precious. She's precious. We have Hannah and Alex Ryder, and they've already dedicated Oliver, but today they're dedicating Wesley. That's amazing. This is the Riders of Ryder Truck Rental. That's where your money goes when you get that. Alex, where do you all live? We live in Galena. In Galena. Wow, this is Galena Day. Okay. Got okay. Alexis and Ryan Santangelo, and they're hey, dedicating Ryan. Grayson and Addison today. Oh, my goodness. Grayson, you're looking good, man. Are, is this your little sister, Addison? Do you help with her? You're a good man. That was a hesitant, but yes, it was there. Where do you live, Ryan? Sunbury. In some, thank God. Okay, here's a Sunbury, just so you'll know. <laughs> we got Nikki Thompson, and she's dedicating Brent and Nikki, Wade today. I want to hug, girl. It's so good to see you. Nikki's been part of this church since there was a church, almost. And Brent, just tell you, man, you're looking good. I like that hat, <laughs> that thing you've got going on. And Wade, you're awesome. Mama's boy, look at that. Wow. wonder who made those shirts. <laughs> I've got Dennis and Sydney dibbling down here. They've already dedicated Josie and Remy, but today the third little girl, Collie, is getting dedicated. Oh, I have to ask you if I can. How did you come up with the name Collie? We just liked it. I love it. There's not really a reason behind it. Good golly, it's Collie. It's really great to see. Where do you live, Dennis? In Galena. In Galena, of course. (laughs) 
<laughs> and last we have Shad and Kelly Adams. Oh, so They've already you. dedicated Oliver, and here is Sid. <laughs> <laughs> you are bad, Dad. Where do you all live? Yeah, that's good. Okay, you lost your little headband that you had earlier, but it it was here. Thank you guys so very much for coming and dedicating your children and allowing us to be a part of it. There's nothing more precious as a parent. I do not think in my life it was this way, that the privilege that we have, and yes, there is a responsibility, but the honor that God has entrusted us with the next generation. And from the bottom of a pastor's heart that lives in a society where family is mocked and ridiculed, and the liberal press can't quite get the definition of what a family is, we honor you and thank you for bringing your children up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord and in the house of God. Amen, Amen, church. And with that in mind, I'd love to pray for your families. Father God, thank you for these men and women, these children. And Lord, I just pray that you'll bless them. Father, as the children grow up, may they often hear the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you'll touch their bodies, Lord, and just use them for your kingdom, Lord. As they learn things in life, Lord, be sure, Father God, that they not only learn of worldly things and good secular things, but also spiritual things, Father. When they put their hands to something, Lord, let it be for your kingdom. Father, may their feet be quick to rush to doing your work and their ears to hearing your word and expand their minds, Lord, academically, spiritually, and use them for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, amen. amen. Would you give them a good hand? God bless you guys. You may go off that way. And may I say, uh, this is the first Mom's Day we've had in this building. Wasn't it a lot easier to have all the families up all the way across instead of four decks up in the old building the way we had to go? Well, we not only love them when they're that age, and we do, but even as they continue to grow, we love them. In just a moment, your children from Children's Church are going to come over and sing a choir special for you. But just before that happens, I want to take a moment to honor a couple special moms, or at least one this morning. I would like to honor the oldest mom in the service this morning. All of you joining us by way of uh, radio or listening on live stream, thank you so much for tuning in. I wish you were here to feel the excitement and see all the dinner reservations at the restaurants people are holding in their hands. But if you're a mom and you're over the age of 70, would you raise your hand? Just leave it up. Now, here's where you'll drop it. If, it, if you don't, no one's raising their hand. Ladies, I understand. <laughs> liar, liar, pants on fire. You know, work with the preacher here this morning. Okay, 70, raise your hand. 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80. 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86. Joe, are you working the crowd? 87, 86. Yeah, thank God for lights. This helps. Look up in the balcony. Stay with me. Ray, help me over on that side. And and whoever's over here, help me over there. 88, 89. Are we still going? 90. What? What? Does anyone live that long? Okay, 91, 92. Good. 92, 92s? Help me, Jesus. Okay. All right. Listen, Joanne, you may not win this thing, but I'm driving down Route 3 as fast as I could go yesterday, but obeying the speed limit if you're on the interstate. And and so I was going down old Route 3, and here's this precious 90. Are you 92 or 93? 92-year-old woman out with her big trash can taking it out of the road. I stopped that car and made Deborah get out and get it in the house for her. <laughs> so we got to show respect. All right, 92. Who, back here, how old was Mary? 91. Is there anyone older than 91 or 92? Where at? Is there someone? Am I missing something? Someone help me. 91 and 92? Is that it? Last call. (laughs) Joe, I think that both of them deserve flowers. Joanne and Mary, bring me another bouquet of flowers. That is great. Have them stand. Hey, guys, someone take a picture. Get a camera on them, something. 
hey, Joe, wait a second. Joe, Joe, don't take that yet. Good night. I need to be in that picture. <laughs> Let me slip in. Come here, Joanne, please. You take this? Uh, yes, you can I carry do. a trash can. You can come to me. <laughs> yes, thank you, Sharon. Joanne, I love you. Thanks for being here today. You make me look so good. <laughs> we got it? And then come back to precious Mary. Right back here. Where's Mary at? Todd, you've lost your hair. <laughs> Dear Lord, I love you. Mary, let me tell you about Mary. Mary made me a huge banner that now hangs in my office. Are you taking a picture, Joe? <laughs> It's a big banner crocheted that says, go hug 37 and a half people. Thank you, Mary, very much. And now, and now, ladies and gentlemen, under the direction of Chrissy Fuller and the magnificent Genoa Children's Department and the adult choir will assist them, I want you to listen to this beautiful song called The Blessing.
be a body and a thousand generations. And your family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations. And your family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you. thank you for being in your house today. God, we thank you for the Christian heritages as we honor moms today, that moms and dads that brought their families to church, Lord, and raised them up. God, I thank you for the families that have dedicated their children in this service and next service that says, I will be that family that makes sure my kids know the word of God. And God, with darkness all around us, we know the true blessing comes by being in your word and following your commands. God, may we do that all the days of our lives. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Excellent job, kids choir. Very good. Can you give them another round of applause? Very good job. I am always amazed at the knowledge and understanding that moms have for their children. When I heard my kid cry, I heard a kid cry. When moms hear children cry, they can say, oh, that child is hungry. The same cry comes out, in my opinion, and moms will say, oh, he needs his diaper changed. Oh, he's just tired. Or he's, he's having a bad day. And so moms can see these types of things in their children, which amazes me. I love when you can have a group of moms inside the house and one kid outside the house screams, and that mom knows it's their child. The other ones don't move because that's not their kids. Dads move, don't move because moms generally take care of that. <laughs> I love how moms can look into the eyes of a kid and see their soul. See what makes them tick. 
know what they like to wear, know what they like to eat, and know all about their children. Moms know their kids. That's probably why when you see on TV at a football game, no one's saying hi to dad. They're saying hi to mom. That's why when you're in a fight in middle school, you can say whatever you want about someone else's dad, but don't you dare cross the line and say something about someone's mama. Moms are powerful influences in our lives, and there's this thing called mother's intuition that I think God has given mothers, sorry guys, we don't get it, but has given mothers, which is an attribute of God himself. And I want to point this out in Psalm chapter 139 today. David writes this psalm, and it's this personal, extremely intensely personal psalm that expresses the awe that God knows us. He knows the smallest detail about us. He knows us before anyone else knew us. He knew our life as it played out before it actually plays out. And let's start reading this in chapter 139, verse 1. David says, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down, when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You hem me in behind me and before me and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high and I could not obtain it. Point number one this morning is God knows his people. God knows his people. It says, before a word is on my tongue, when I sit, when I stand, you can't hide from God. It says he has searched us. He knows about us. And it's not like this five-year-old that's searching for his shoes. This is an intense search, like a boring, like a deep digging that he has searched us. He knows about us. He has created us. And he wants to know us and wants to have us a part of Uh, uh, wants to have him as a part of our life. Guys, sometimes we think about God being far off in a distance, and, and we don't realize this intricate love that he has for us. Even though he knows every detail of us, he desires to know us even more. And it's not like we've done something great to earn God's love. You simply were born, therefore you have God's love. I think about that in our own lives. Like you think about your children, Who is the cutest child up here? Whichever one was your grandkid was the cutest one up here. Amen? It says that he he, he knows us and he loves us. And I think about the the love that I have for my children. I want you to think about the love you have for your kids and your grandkids. It's not a love because they got a perfect score on the SAT. It's not a love because they won some kind of beauty pageant. It's not a love because they've given all their money to missions. It's a love simply because they have your last name, because they act like you, because they look like you. I remember about 15, we've been here in Columbus for about 15 years, and I remember when we first moved here, uh, we were in an apartment for like six months, and then we bought a house up in Sunbury, and it was a fixer-upper, and I have no skills at fixing stuff up, and so I asked my son... (laughs) I apologize, but the guy that helps me fix my house is shaking his head. (laughs) Didn't see that one coming, Dennis. But I thought I'd get some help from my children who were five and three at the time. (laughs) And just make it some fun projects. So I went to the dollar store and bought them uh, a little hammer, a little screwdriver, and a little pair of pliers with this little box. And, And we would go around and we'd fix little things around the house. A couple days later, I was in the house, and, and I hear my oldest, Zach, screaming, no! And I see my younger one at the time, Caleb, pick up the hammer and chuck it right at my oldest son's head. And my, he's, he's a baseball player. He's got great aim. So when he hit it, hit him right in the side of the face. And this big welt just kept growing and growing, and we took him to urgent care and got it uh, fixed and everything like that. And so it uh, turned out to be Okay. Um, took the hammers away, learned the lesson, <laughs> didn't do that with my other children. But even though my oldest, or my, my, my son Caleb tried to kill my son Zach at the age of three, and I know that, it doesn't stop any love that I have for my son. I love him not because he does stupid things, not because he gets with his friends and does stupid things. I love him specifically because he is mine. 
And when we see that God loves us, not because you do great things, not because you do stupid things, strictly because you are his child, it makes us understand and fully know that he has searched us, he knows us, and he loves us. Amen? We have no secrets with God. He's acquainted with all of our ways. He knows our tricks. He knows our struggles. He knows what makes us happy. He knows what makes us hurt. He knows what motivates us, which discourages us. I like on Scripture, it says, he knows all the course of our life. He knows what school you're going to go to, who you're going to marry, what jobs you'll have, what retirement you'll have, and whether or not you'll come to the point in your life where you ask him into your life. He says, your knowledge is too great for me. You lay your hand upon me. And it's not like you're laying your hand upon me in a negative way, like I'm going to get you, but it's like you laid your hand upon me to protect me and to cover me. And it's, it's almost like he just encompasses us, that his hand is around us on every side. And it gives, it gives like a, a, a scenario where like an army is coming into a small little city. And the army is encamped all around this little city, and the little city has no escape. They have been overtaken. They've been overturned. His hand is upon us. Guys, there's not a place where we can run from God's love. There's not a single place we can go where God's love is not there. It talks about that if I go in a few verses that I go up to heaven, you're there. If I go down to Sheol, you're there. If I go to the far east or the far west, there's not a way to escape God's love from us. And even in the midst of him knowing all about us, he still loves us. We are known and loved. It goes on to say here in verses 7 through 12, Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light about to be night, even the darkness is not dark to you, and the night is bright all the day, for darkness is as light with you. Point number two, God wants us to know him. Guys, that's why we're here today. I mean, the kids' choir was cute. Hopefully you took pictures, you put it in your feed, so every year it pops up and you get to see it again. But, But we're here to understand and know God more day by day. I was talking with an individual before service about how his wife has been in the same Bible study for 40-some years. And I think about the, a group of ladies that have got together. They have searched. They know about God. They know the intricate details that, that maybe some of us don't know. They understand how God works in our lives. And what a blessing for that to see in their lives to know how much they are deeply loved by God. When we understand this letter that is written to us, I think there's a few points that come out in this passage, and even though I don't have those three points for you under point number two, I want us to understand that, that we need to know God, and I don't know if I mentioned point number two, but point number two is God wants us to know Him. God wants us to know Him. Uh, under that, He desires our time. We can't run from God. God knows where we're going even before we go. We have the blessing of His presence And when I think about Mother's Day, I want to skip on to verse 13 in just a second. But show the picture of the 12-week-old baby. This is a 12-week-old baby right there. You can see his fingers. You can see his toes. uh, You can see the form. You can see the shape. This this is generally, I believe, when people are finding out um, kind of the gender of the baby. Verse number 13, it's going to tell us that he knit us together in the womb. That picture right there, guys, I know we pick on our government a lot, and they get a lot of things wrong, but if I'm seeing what's coming through the system with the Supreme Court, and if it is real, and we're getting to a close where abortion may be illegal in our country, a place where I never thought we would be, we we need to praise God for that, amen? Amen. Something that we've talked about, we've prayed about, we've had meetings for, may happen in our country, and I don't know what that looks like but I'm thankful we're moving in that right direction. And I would, be, I, w- I would be missed if I didn't say that if you've come to a point in your life where you've had an abortion, realize that God loves you, 
that is a sin that is forgiven just like any other sin. And please don't let Satan hold that against you if you've been forgiven. You've asked for forgiveness for that. But we've been knit together in the womb. That God has put us together. And it's, it's not just this simple kind of like, hey, there's a bun in the oven, boom, there's a kid. It says he has knit us together and gives us like the feeling of like weaving a basket together. Like this one comes through here and this one comes through here. And he puts all these things into our lives. There are no mistake babies. Mom and dad may not have planned for this child, but God planned this child in the midst of the belly before mom and dad knew. What a great and glorious God we have. Um, it says we can't run from him because he knows all about us. And I think the opposite is true. We shouldn't run from God because you can't run from God. We run to God. When those problems come into our lives, where we make those mistakes, God should be the first place that we run to. He wants us to know him. And as I said before in these verses, it doesn't matter where you go, you can't hide from God. We can hide from other people in our lives. We can hide things from ourselves and think, well, this isn't that big of a deal. No one's really going to know about this. And, and, and no one really cares about this. But when we think about it, we can't hide a single thing from God. He desires us to run to him. Let me ask you this. Are there any guys that would say, I am the person in the family when someone's hurt that they run to me? Is there any men in here that they run to you? Or is it just is it all the ladies? Would the ladies raise their hand and say, I'm the one that people run to? Yep, yep. I get this. A few years ago, my, my oldest hurt himself. And he said his arm was hurting. And I lifted up and it didn't, it was fine. And I moved it left and right, it was fine. And uh, for about 10 hours, he's telling me, listen, Dad, my arm hurts. And I'm like, well, it looks like it's pretty good to me. I'm not paying that $40 copay at urgent care, so you're on your own. And finally, my wife is like, Scott, like, just here's the $40. Go take him in. And I was like, doctor, this is a waste of your time. But he says his arm hurts, and he takes his arm up and like this, like this. Nothing happens. Doctor opens up the arm, and the blood-curdling scream that came from my oldest son that he had broken some bone in his elbow. I see why kids don't run to their fathers. <laughs> what do we say? Suck it up. Get up. You're fine. Moms, come give me a hug. You're okay. I'll take care of you. Like, I get it. I am thankful for the mother in my life that got me out of a lot of different groundings. He also desires to lead us. God wants to lead us. His ways are always better than our ways. What I wish would happen when we become Christians is that we wouldn't have a choice to follow anymore. I wish that God would just put this in my life. Scott, this is what you're going to do. You're going to have love for other people. You're going to have patience. You're going to see through the eyes of what I want you to see. But unfortunately, God gives us a choice. He allows us to follow. So that we have the choice that, yes, I want your leadership in my life. We know that his ways is better than our ways, but sometimes we just want to test the water and see what it's like in the other way. And of course, it turns out for us not to be such, as, uh, such the way. Our church here is known for a lot of things. Our church, I, I think one of the things that was disappointed this past week, our church is known for cream horns on election day. And so if you vote here at the church, it's the best donuts you'll have anywhere around central Ohio. Unfortunately, we didn't have them this year because of everything going on. But our church is known for a lot of things. We want to be the ones that are out in the community. We want to be the ones that are making a difference in our community. But when I think about a church that was known for the best thing, I look back to the early church in Antioch, and the community said, listen, you guys are so weird you're acting like that Jesus Christ person so much, like you're like a little Christ person. Like you act in like little Christians or, or something like that, and the name kind of stuck. They're like, yeah, you're making fun of us for acting like Jesus Christ. We'll take that as a badge of honor, and we'll continue to be called Christians. And guys, well, they were known for Christians, not because they met together in the Christian church or First Baptist of Antioch. They were known as Christians because they acted like Jesus Christ. Guys, we're known as Christians not because our name is on a roll at a church, but how we act, how we love our community, and how we seek to honor God in everything that we do. Not only does he uh, want us to be led by him, but he wants to hold us. 
You know, I talked about like how we are a, a small city that is being surrounded in every way. We can't get away from the love of God. Now, guys, there's times we don't want to get away from the love of God. It says, even in the darkness, oh, the darkness tries to snatch me, it'll be in vain. Because darkness is like light to you. Listen, when you're on earth going through your human experience, because really we're spiritual beings having this human experience, because our spiritual bodies will go on forever. But when we're having this human experience as a human, darkness is pretty dark. But when we allow the spiritual side to go through the darkness, it's a little dark, and it's a little bit of a sting, but there's still light in the midst of that. Guys, this past week, our Christian Academy lost one of our coaches. He was in a car accident Tuesday afternoon, 58 years old, getting ready for a baseball game later that day, and a semi rolled through him, and he lost his life immediately. They had to call the baseball team and say, hey, do not go to the baseball game. Come back to the chapel, and we'll explain why. They got there. They prayed. This happened on a Tuesday. Wednesday morning, first thing we always do is chapel. And I, I don't generally go to chapel, but I went to this chapel just to support. The message was good. The worship was good. But the power of the Spirit was undeniable. This darkness, losing a coach, losing an influential person in the community is dark. But yet what I saw that day was joy. And as a speaker said, like, death does not have victory. Death has sting. It's like getting stung by a bee. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt those that are left here. But death does not get the victory because Jesus Christ already beat the pain of death on the cross some 2,000 years ago. Amen? Amen? Amen. So we experienced the sting, but we got the victory. The victory's already laid up with me. The victory should be already laid up with you if you've accepted Christ as your personal Savior at some point in your life. God knows us, wants to be known, and he desires to hold us. And guys, I don't know if you came in here today thinking you're just some ordinary person, and I don't, I don't want to preach and say you're awesome, but I'm going to tell you what Scripture says, and Scripture says you are darn right awesome. Verse 13. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret. Intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. Point number three today, God wants you to know that you are wonderfully made. I don't know if there's a a better part of Scripture that is more pro-life than these verses right here. It's not, an, it's not some kind of glob of cells that is put together, but from day one, God put it in there. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. And God has so many great things about us that sometimes we miss. And maybe there's someone in here today that's already a believer that's serving the Lord, but you don't think as highly as yourself as you should. And maybe you think you, you wish you were a little bit taller, had a little bit more hair, had a bigger... No, this is me. I'm talking about myself. But maybe you're here today and you thought you needed something different. And we're comparing ourselves to everyone's Instagram post rather than their real life. And we just need to know that we are wonderfully created the way that God wants us to be created. And when I think about this, I, I, I grew up in the Motor City, the big three, Ford, GM, Chrysler, and their big thing was let's get as many cars off the line as quickly as we possibly can. And so we will keep them the same type of standard to get them going through the line as quickly as possible. When Henry Ford created this line, he only had one color, and it was the color like black, uh, like a dark brown black, because it, it, the paint uh, cured the quickest. And so it wasn't about being cool, it was just getting them through. On the other hand, there are such cars as this Bugatti La Voiture Nor, which goes for about $18 million. It is hand-built to the exact specifications of the owner. They make two of these per year. Currently, there are nine or ten of them on the road. Um, two and a half years to make. 
I was looking at it, but unfortunately it only gets nine gallons, uh, nine miles to the gallon, so I decided to pass on this vehicle. As opposed to the Ford F-150, which takes about 20 hours to make from start to finish as it goes down the line. As I think sometimes we look at ourselves and we see ourselves as F-150s, which isn't bad. Like, F-150s are pretty good. But guys, we're Bugattis. We are created in the image of God. We are created for a purpose. No one else is like us. You can get into no one else has the same fingerprint as you. Your heartbeat, your, your DNA, you are uniquely created as a Bugatti. But let me also say, as, as a pastor, we need you to work like Fords and not Bugattis. We need you to have that, that pickup truck where you can get work done rather than a showpiece. Be comfortable with who you are in Christ Jesus. I think some of the things that I've seen in people that they didn't like about themselves ultimately became the greatest thing that God used in their life. Sometimes that was a positive thing. Sometimes it was a negative thing that happened in their life that God used for the greatest. And I want to tell you that if you're living in the will of God, you're seeking to follow him, you're seeking to be like that, that church in Antioch where you're a Christian, you're a Christ follower, if you're doing that, I truly believe that God will use you for his service. And God has shaped you for his service. It goes on to say that you know all the days of my life. They were fixed, they were settled, even before the development of the body. That God has taken care of us. I'm reminded of, as, hey, listen, I know I'm not super old, but I'm reminded as my kids get older, I'm getting older. And listen, there's financial uh, sermons where you can preach on being financially frugal, and I get that. Dave Ramsey would not appreciate this next statement. But guys, you can always make more money. You can never get more time. You can never get more time. Guys, get on the phone, call mom. You don't know. You don't know when she'll be going down the road on a Tuesday afternoon at 3 o'clock and a semi runs right through her. That conversation you need to have with family about Jesus Christ, it can't wait. Today has to happen. We are not promised another day. And so my encouragement for you is your days are fixed from the very beginning. Even the picture at, at 12 weeks old, you, God knows the number of breaths you will take. He knows the number of years you will live and the opportunities that you will have. And those are fixed numbers. Live every day. That's one of my, that's one of my guardrails I have for my life is to live every day. And in closing, I want to tell you about how I lived one day that was pretty cool. Uh, Benihana, which is a great restaurant up at Polaris, used to have this $10 special on Sunday afternoons. They changed it to like $22, so I don't go there anymore. But I remember walking in one day with the family, and when some, I got four kids, so when a couple kids go somewhere else, I'm like, sweet, I've got one kid, let's go. So we go up to Benihana. And if you've been there, they cook in front of you, and there's like eight to ten seats around you. And uh, there's three people already sitting down, which is always kind of awkward because you don't know people, but you're supposed to talk. And so I sit down, I think there's four of us there at the time. Um, I sit down, and this dude's just jacked, like probably six foot four, 280 pounds, not an inch of fat on him, just boom. And I look at him, I'm like, you play football? And he's like 20 years old, maybe 21. He's like, no, nah, man, I play tennis. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I've never seen a six foot four, 280 ripped guy play tennis. He goes, I'm just kidding, I play football. I was like, do you play in college? He's like, yeah. I was like, are you pretty good? He's like, yeah, I'm pretty good. I was like, where do you play? He's like, I play for Ohio State. I'm like, I was like, oh, do you like get playing time and stuff? He's like, yeah, I start. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Like, like his brother's just laughing at me, like looking at me like, um, and he go, I go, what number are you? He goes, I'm number two. And I'm thinking in my head, in my head, I'm like, okay, number two. Oh, I've seen people wear number two jerseys. I've seen... I've seen him, and then I look up, I'm like, oh, you're a big deal, aren't you? <laughs> and his brother goes to me like, dude, you're the only person in Columbus who doesn't know who this guy is. And I was like, oh, you're going to be like a top five draft pick. And he's like, no, man, hopefully I'm number one. And this was back when he's at Ohio State. But anyways, this guy by the name of Chase Young. And you see him with the Washington football team, 
and he's the nicest guy, told me how you take the, uh, the spicy butter, put it on the, the hot part there, and then you dip your chicken in it. It was awesome. Never seen a kid eat that much protein, but he, just the, the sweetest guy around. What I want to tell you about Chase Young, I love that experience. He let us take pictures with him. Just a super cool dude. And I had an experience with him. Does he know anything about me? No. He may remember. Remember that dude who didn't know you in Columbus? They, yeah. We do not have a relationship. We had an experience. We learned a little bit about each other, but we don't have a relationship. And my biggest fear is for anyone that's here today is maybe you've had an experience about God. Maybe you've learned about God um, through seeing him through some movies, or you've come to church here and you know about God. You've heard what Jesus Christ has done on the cross, and you know about God. You could probably even tell us some Bible stories of when your parents brought you to church. Uh, You know about David and Goliath. Uh, you know about some of the things that, that David did in his life, and, and you know some of the Bible stories. But if I were to ask you if you have a relationship with God, you'd have to say no. I've had an experience. I, I, I've come forward one time, but I don't have this ongoing relationship with God. And I want to tell you today, it's just John 14, 6. While Jesus was here on earth, they're like, hey, Jesus, are you the real deal? Like, we see that you have power over sickness. We see that you have power over death. We see that you can take these two little fish and loaves and feed a whole mess of people. But really, what are you, Jesus? Jesus looks at them and says, listen, I am the way, I am truth, and I am the life. Like, I am the real deal. And besides that, no one else gets to God except through me. And maybe you're here today thinking that you can get into heaven and have a relationship with God by being a good person. What Jesus Christ said that day is the only way you come to me, the only way you get to God is through me. I'm that avenue that gets you there. And so I'm going to ask everyone to bow their heads and close their eyes. And as we close out service today, God, we're thankful for the love you have for us. We're thankful for how you've created us. But God, I also ask you to work in people's lives right now. Maybe people for the first time in their lives are realizing that, you know, I know a lot about God, but I've never come to the point in my life where I began this relationship. And God, I pray that today will be that day. God, if there are people in this room, Lord, that know about you but don't have that relationship. And guys, I would ask you, if you've never come to a point to begin that relationship, it's so easy. It's as simple as telling God you're sorry for the things you've done wrong. We've all done things that are wrong. Believing in God, which 90% of America believes that there is a God. It's that last part where we come and say, I want you to be my God. We are fearfully and wonderfully created. God wants to spend time with us. God wants to know us. He loves us even, even he knows the worst day of our life. He still loves us. And I would just ask that if you've never began a relationship with him, would you pray this prayer today? Say, dear God, I'm sorry for the things that I've done wrong. I believe in your son, Jesus. And right now I ask him into my life. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, at the end of service, I'm going to be down front. And if you did make a decision or had any questions about a decision, um, I would be down front and I'd love to talk more about that with you. Thanks again for being here today for Mother's Day. We have a few exciting things going on. And so I'm going to ask Pastor Frank to... You handled that very well. <laughs> very, wasn't that smooth? Give Pastor Scott a great hand this morning. What Scott was going to see before he heard me cough was, please watch the screen for the announcements. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. And now, here's what you need to know around Genoa. 
Are you new to Genoa or are you interested in learning more about our church? Then you are not going to want to miss our Information Class 101. This class will be taught by Pastor Frank and will be held on Sunday, May 15th at 3 p.m. in the new chapel. Food and childcare will be provided. To find out more, please head over to our website. It's baby bottle time again. The simple act of filling a baby bottle can make a huge impact on the lives of those touched through the care ministry of Genoa. Grab a bottle on your way out, fill it with change, bills, or checks, and return it to the church within the next few weeks. Thank you for helping this cause, as this money will impact the lives of young women and their unborn children. Mark your calendars because we have a lot of special events coming up. MFUGE Youth Camp will be held from June 6th to the 10th, Kids Camp will be held from June 20th to the 23rd, and VBS will be held from July 11th to the 14th. To learn more about these events or to register for them, head over to genoachurch.org slash events. Well, that's what you need to know. I'm Jessica, and I'll see you around Genoa. Thank you so much, Jess. Huh? Can I have your kids? Oh. Sure. You're my favorite. No, this isn't a joke. I'll pawn them off on you. I was recording. Oh. Oh, that's nice. It's a joke. It's a joke. You set me up. <laughs> Definitely give her a hand for that. <laughs> So very quickly, let me tell you, the baby bottles, we have a ministry here called Genoa Cares. With Genoa Cares, we support several of the pregnancy ministry centers, including our very own Stowe Center, which we, for the last five years, have had the equipment and the uh, people and the volunteers to help so many young people, medical clinics that go around. We absolutely were supportive of the CORE Center and PDHC. And so what we're asking you to do in this service we do not have enough baby bottles for the next service. So they're going to wait for like two weeks to get theirs. But I need their 450 bottles out on the tables. If you would take them when you leave, fill them up with change, and would you bring them back in the next two Sundays? Don't hold on to them. We need to get them back. We need to get the money in so it can be used. And we need the bottles back so the 11 o'clock service can get right with God also. So... <laughs> Two, within two weeks, if you'd bring those in, that would help us so much. And guys, would you do the very best you can with this? If you're just writing a check, you'd make it out to Genoa. And in the memo, put baby bottles or Genoa Cares. I think on our website, there's even a line that says Genoa Cares. We weren't able to do this during, excuse me, we weren't able to do this during COVID. But now we are able to do it, and we need your help and appreciate you doing that very much. The big event coming up this week is Feeding the Ukraine. We will prepare almost a quarter of a million meals between Friday and Saturday. About a bunch of you have signed up for that, and I thank you. There's a very small number, ladies, listen up. There's a very small number of you that your email did not get answered, and we're having a little bit of struggle with that. If you have not been contacted by Tuesday evening, if you have any questions, this is the address you need to send it to, not Genoa Church. But C. Pence, Mike Pence's sister, C. Pence, not really, but you'll remember it that way. C. Pence at GenoaChurch.org, and Carol will be able to answer your questions. If you're not plugged in, she'll get you plugged in. We still have several spots that need to be plugged, but would you do me a favor and don't sign up for four-hour shifts? The shifts that we have left, we just need two-hour folks to do that. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. The buckets are out today as you leave for our regular offerings. And those of you that have not yet turned in the Ukraine offerings, thanks, guys, so very much for being here. Pray for the efforts this week. On Thursday, the team will arrive. The missionaries will come, about 20 of them. And then on Friday and Saturday, we'll get it all completed, and it will be sent out at the end of that, uh, on Saturday evening. So thanks so much. Would you stand with me, please? Pastor Scott is going to be standing right here in the front. If you're a first-time guest, please come down. We'd love to say hi to you and welcome you. As Mary made me the banner, hug 37 and a half people. And remember, we love you guys. Happy Mother's Day. Bye-bye.